Hello, welcome to Worship on the Dane and Trent Circuit YouTube channel. I hope you've sensed God being close in whatever have been the experiences of this past week. Hopefully, as the lockdown restrictions have begun to ease, you have perhaps had the opportunity to see more of family and friends, even if still socially distanced. On this, the second Sunday in July, we remember the work of Action for Children, a charity which protects and supports children and young people, providing practical and emotional care and support, ensuring that their voices are heard. Today, we also welcome Malcolm Coates, who will bring a message for us later in the service. As always, we appreciate all those who contribute to the worship in many different ways and those whose technological skills put everything together. So let us worship God. Let us pray. Father, we come before you today to join our prayers with our Christian sisters and brothers throughout the world as we worship you. We know that you are the King and Creator of the universe and that you still have time for us as individuals as we pray to you. You know how difficult our present circumstances are. Because you are the ever-present, 
in times of trouble. You are the same yesterday, today and forever. Give each one of us the courage to follow and offer your grace and love to the world around us. In these troubled times when people do not know what to build upon. We have the answer through you. But Father, we know there are times when we do get our relationship with you wrong. When there are times we spoil it by the way we speak, by the way we act. By the times we do not care. And just in a few moments, we bring our before God our own confessions. Thank you, Father. But as we pray to you now, we know you will forgive us, that you will make our hearts and our minds clean and ready to work for you this week. And we thank you for that. Knowing that we are your children and that you care for us. Amen. And now let's say the kingdom prayer that Jesus taught us to say. We'll use a traditional form, but use whatever words you feel comfortable with. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. St. Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the sower. The same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced the crop. A hundred, sixty, thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And then, continuing at verse 18, Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away that which was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, 
yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times that which was sown. This is the word of the Lord. sure we will all start writing our memoirs. Covid-19 memoirs. What did you do in lockdown? How did you pass the hundred days? I wonder what you did. I've got a sister who has spent her time in lockdown crafting. She enjoys crafting but has come to the point now where she has to say, do I leave home and move into the garden shed? Because actually all the craft she has made has started to take over the house. Fortunately for me, my vice is gardening. So it all stays outside. But as you know, we moved in in August. And we've put in some new plants and we've started a vegetable patch. And we've got pieces of garden furniture about that lights up at dark and does all sorts of weird and wonderful things. But it's just personal to us. Some of the plants we have grown have been successful. And some of the plants we have grown haven't been successful at all. Many times it's dependent upon how it's arrived through the post because we haven't been able to go to the garden centre to select them. And even when some of them have been replaced, the replacements haven't been 100% better. Today, we're talking about sowing seeds. Jesus is out and about telling stories by the lake. 
and he tells people about a sower. Not an unusual sight. No tractors, just seed in a basket distributed over the fields. What it is. But as you read on in the story, you see the explanation of Jesus about where the seed has fallen. Where it's landed, has decided its fate. Some seed fell on stony ground, didn't grow, but the birds came and ate it up. Some seed fell amongst the weeds and the weeds choked it. But the seed that fell on the fertile ground produced a hundred percent fold. But as I've been reading this, I realise that more and more the story has been about the soil that the seed landed on. That's the real story. And so in my own mind, I'm inclined to tell this story, this parable, the parable of the soil. How has the soil reacted to the seed? And we know in this parable that Jesus tells, the seed is a way of explaining his word. The stories he tells that he gives away. And how people react to them. Where is our seed falling? When I read this story, it feels as though it's an invitation from God to look out for the soil, to prepare it so that it's ready to grow wherever the seed goes, remove the hard bits, remove the weeds, and we make it all good soil. That's what I feel he's asking each one of us. We know that God's word is perfect. That we don't need to add anything to his word. Because it answers all the questions. But because a seed is God's word. And he's prepared it. We know that it's got to be the best. Because God only gives us the best in our lives. So let's take this opportunity to accept God's invitation to prepare the soil around us. To let people know what the word is about. Then the word can grow. Do you remember the people that used to walk up and down our high streets? with signs on saying, the end of the world is nigh. Prepare to meet thy doom. And the slogans are part of the Christian story. A very important part of the Jesus story. The problem is the banner or the placard do not tell the whole story. The bit of the story told were often the butt of jokes from people on the street. People did not take them seriously. But Jesus promises that he will return. Jesus promises in Revelation 21 that we will receive a reformed earth and a transformed heaven. Wow, both new, both available to each one of us. What have we done to deserve it? Nothing. 
it's only because Jesus loves us because he loves us that it's there. And the promise of a transformed earth and heaven is not just pie in the sky. It's not just blue sky dreaming. It's actually steak on the plate. It's there to feed us. And it's not a day to be frightened of. It's not a day to worry about. It'll be a day of rejoicing. Because God wants to share that. Reformed. Earth and heaven. With each one of us. And all we need to do is build our relationship day by day to become stronger in our faith. And as I say from this parable, it's about us sharing the good news, preparing the soil a little bit at a time. So that as a seed of God's word from where, wherever they hear it from, they will hear the word and grow in grace. So remember, it's about telling the truth, sharing the story. As a Yorkshireman, I can honestly say, it's easy to share the story. Because there's no pounds, shillings and pence attached to it. The story is free. It's been given to me freely so that I will pass it on freely. And today, let's start by thinking about the service we've heard, the prayers, the readings, the songs. What has God spoken to us through today? And if something stands out, let's share it next time we're on the phone. Next time we're attached to a group of people from a safely distanced area. Let's share the story. Not just now, but always. Especially at a difficult time like now. Because we need those promises. We need those certainties. And we need the love of Christ. Today and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you offering our concerns for others. We pray for the church worldwide, thinking of the challenges of recent months. May the church, your people, continue to witness sharing the love and hope which is to be found in following you. We pray for the various church fellowships in the UK including our own chapels and churches in the Dane and Trent circuit, as they look towards being able to physically gather for worship in the coming months. Lord, grant your wisdom in all those undertakings. Lord, we lift before you the peoples of your world, diverse in language and culture, but all precious in your sight. On this Action for Children Sunday, we remember all children and young people. We particularly pray for those who find themselves in difficult and dangerous situations, vulnerable because of circumstance. We ask for your protection upon them, that they may receive appropriate help and sanctuary when they need it. We give thanks for the work of Action for Children and other charities which seek to help. May they be able to access the resources they need in order to be able to offer help to others. Lord, we bring before you those who are poorly, 
those affected by COVID-19 and those dealing with other health issues. Lord, bring healing. We remember too all those who have lost loved ones in whatever circumstances. Lord, bring your peace. And so we bring these our prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. to a close. As we begin another week, may we be confident that God will journey with us. May we allow the Holy Spirit to guide our words and our actions in whatever context we find ourselves in. Sense the warm passion of the Spirit's flame. Speak with the fervour of the Spirit's voice. Move with the music of the Spirit's dance. May God's Spirit bless us, inspire us, and confirm us in our calling as disciples of Christ. Amen. <laughs>